Hello friends, welcome back to my new lecture. Today we are going to discuss or we are going to solve a problem on thermal contact resistance. Before going to solve thermal contact resistance, the concept of thermal contact resistance must be clear to the student. So I request, first of all, you should go through the definition of what is thermal contact resistance and concept of thermal contact resistance. And then you can solve a problem on thermal contact resistance very easy. Okay. Now this is the problem on thermal contact resistance which is given. Let's read the problem. A wall of furnace is made up of inside layer of silica brick. So in, there is a furnace, there is a furnace whose inside the wall consists inside layer of silica brick which is 120 mm thick covered with magnesite brick of 240 mm. So first of all there is a silica brick and then there is a magnesite brick and the dimension of both is given that is 120 mm is a silica brick and 240 mm is the magnesite brick. So let me draw now let me draw as per the given data I will draw first of all a silica brick so let let's consider this is the silica brick whose thickness is also given the thickness is 120 mm so this is silica brick so I'll write here as a silica this is a silica right and whose thickness is 120 mm so let me draw the thickness over here as like this so this is thickness and we know that the all dimension we take in meter so 120 mm converted into meter so it will become 0 0.120 meter okay so first we have drawn a silica after that they what they are given with magnesite brick so this is covered on the outside this is covered with 240 mm magnesite brick so let me draw now the magnesite brick wall as like this so this is a magnesite brick so let me draw it correctly so this is magnesite so let me write here as magnesite Right. okay so this is magnesite and its thickness is 240 mm so once again I will draw the thickness over here and that is a 240 mm so let's convert it into meter so it will become a 240 meter okay so accordingly given silica and magnesite this is inside actually this is inside furnace this is inner side and this is what outer side Okay, this is inner side and outer side also we have plotted, right. The temperature at inside surface of brick and outside surface of magnesite brick are 725 and 110. So they have given inside surface temperature and outside surface temperature. Inside surface temperature given to you is 725. So let's consider this temperature is 725 degrees Celsius. Okay, and outside surface. It's not air temperature given, but they are given outside surface temperature. So let me draw outside surface temperature, which is given to you how much? 110 degrees Celsius. So this is 110 degrees Celsius, right? So 725 is on inner side and 110 on outer side. Next, what they have given is this we have plotted. The contact resistance between two wall at interface is this is contact resistance given. they have given directly contact resistance which is 0 0.0035 degrees celsius well so now when silica and magnesite they are in contact with each other as we are knowing the contact will not be perfect and because the contact is not perfect it will generate some resistance and that resistance is given to you so i will write it directly as resistance thermal contact we denote as rtc which is equal to point 0, 0, 0.0035 degrees celsius per watt so that's the contact resistance given to you per unit wall area so when we are considering wall area is one meter square so if we are consider one meter square as wall area then this is the thermal contact resistance if thermal conductivity of silica and magnesite brick is 1.7 watt per meter per degree celsius and 5.8 watt per meter per degree celsius so they have given thermal conductivities of silica and magnesite as 1.7 and 5.8 so let me draw a silica thermal conductivity and magnesite thermal conductivity so silica thermal conductivity is 1.7 i am not putting unit here to avoid a complication because there is number of thing we have to write on the figure so i am not writing unit of the thermal conductivity okay so 1.7 
is thermal conductivity of silica and magnesite is 5.8 so here you can write k1 k2 k1 k2 so let's consider silica as a material number 1 silica as a material number 1 so this is material number 1 and the magnesite as material number 2 so as this is silica is 1 magnesite is 2 i will write this is k1 this is k1 and this is k2 so thermal conductivity k1 and k2 is given to you okay so what we have to calculate the rate of heat loss per unit area of wall so what we have to find out let me check what we have to find out to find to find first thing rate of heat transfer per unit area that's what asks so first of all we have to find out q per unit area and next what we have what they have asked is the temperature drop at interface temperature drop at interface so where is the interface interface is somewhere here so we have to find out temperature drop at interface so temperature drop at interface that's what the second thing so two things we have to determine first q per unit area and temperature drop at interface these are the two things we have to determine let's proceed how we can determine these two things if you understood given data solving problem is not at all difficult i always tell that solving problem is not at all difficult but you have to understand problem what is the problem i repeat there is a silica and magnesite this is the wall of furnace furnace is on this side furnace is on this side silica thermal conductivity is given 1.7 silica thickness is given 0.120 in meter magnesite thermal conductivity that we have denoted as a k2 which is 5.8 and thickness of that is 0.24 inside surface having temperature as a 725 let's consider this is t1 which is equal 725 let's consider this is t2 which is 100 Ten degrees Celsius. Okay, so two temperatures are given, and it's a surface. It's not air or gas temperature. Okay, then here with this particular given data, and in addition to that, they are given thermal contact resistance. What is thermal contact resistance? Point zero zero three five. Means what? If I draw the temperature profile over here, if I draw the temperature profile over, so temperature profile means what? Drop in temperature line. so there is a thermal contact resistance and that's why there is we have to show the drop over here and then it will be moving as like this so this is what temperature profile called okay and here this is t1 this is t2 let me consider this is a t3 and let me consider this is t4 so there are four temperatures as like this there are four temperature as like this okay with this i have to find out q i have to find out q so how we can find out q let's go for the solution now solution first of all what they ask they ask q so first i am going to determine a q so how we can determine a q how we can determine a q that you are knowing that q is equal to we are having a standard formula q is equal to delta t upon summation of resistance there is no change in this particular this particular formula What is delta T? Delta T there are two temperature, higher temperature minus lower temperature, so seven twenty five degrees Celsius minus one hundred and ten degrees Celsius. Okay, these are the two temperatures that we are knowing it. Now summation of resistances. How many resistances? This is conductive resistance. This is conductive resistance because they are solid. Conductive, conductive. In addition to that, the thermal contact resistance will be added. So if I have to draw the resistance diagram, the resistance diagram will be something like this. So let me draw thermal resistance diagram as like this. So generally there is a two resistance, but here is three resistance. Why three resistance? Because they have already given that there is thermal contact resistance. So I can write this is R one. R one is silica resistance. This is R two. R two is magnesite resistance. And this is what thermal contact R T C. Thermal contact resistance. What is temperature on this side, and what is temperature on this side? The temperature at this side is seven twenty-five degree degree Celsius. Temperature on this is one hundred and ten degree Celsius. So this is T two, and this is what T one. In between here, we are having what temperature T three, and here we are having temperature T four. So this is T one here. This is T two here, and in between we are having T three. for okay so summation of resistance summation of resistance becomes now summation of three resistances okay so let me write let me write summation of resistance summation of resistance is nothing but r1 plus r2 
thermal contact plus R. Two. These are three resistance. Out of that, thermal contact resistance is given directly. So if you check and given data, RTC is equal to point zero zero three five. That's given directly. R one and R two, I have to determine it. How we can determine R one and R two? It's a solid. It's a solid wall. And for solid wall, what is the resistance? Resistance is L upon K. So I can determine thermal contact resistance as like this. R one, R one is L one upon K one A one. Plus R thermal contact as it is. Plus R two R two is L two upon K two A two, and that's per unit area. Per unit area means what? This and this will become one. Okay, so next step will become thermal contact resistance summation of thermal. L one. What is L one? L one you can check. L one is point one two zero. L two is point twenty four. K one is one point seven, and K two is five point eight. So let's put that particular values. L one, L one is point one two zero divided by K one. What is K one? One point seven. Thermal contact resistance given in the problem directly point zero zero three five plus L two. What is L two? Point two four zero divided by thermal conductivity of magnesite that is five point eight. So we have written the all resistances here, and if you check the calculation, the calculation will come to be point one one four eight. Degree Celsius per watt. Degree Celsius per watt. That's the total resistance we have got. Once you have got a total resistance, determination of heat transfer is quite easy now. Determination of heat transfer is quite easy. How it is easy? That we are knowing already that Q is equal to delta T upon R summation of R. Already we have determined. Already we are knowing delta T, and we have determined summation of R. Put up the value and determine it. Okay. So let's put the value and determine it. Let's put that Q is equal to Q is equal to what? Delta T. Delta T will become 725 higher temperature minus 110 degree Celsius divided by thermal con uh, thermal resistances. So 0.1148. So Q will become Q will become 53537.14 watt per meter square. Why we are written per meter square? Because area we have taken one meter square, and that's why it is watt per meter square. Okay, so that is the answer. The first unknown answer we have determined. Now, what is second we have to determine? The second thing which we have to determine, which is ask, is temperature drop at interface. Temperature drop at interface means what? Temperature drop here. What is temperature drop here? That is T three minus T four is the temperature drop. T three minus T four is the temperature drop. How we can determine T three minus T four? So second unknown, we have to determine T three minus T four. That is what temperature drop. Temperature drop across interface. Okay. So for determining for determining T three minus T four, what we are going to do? We are going to use simple formula. This formula that Q is equal to this particular formula. We are going to determine Q is equal to delta D upon summation of R. Here. If I keep delta T T three minus T four, if I keep delta T as a T three minus T four, then R will become R T C. That's a simple concept. If delta T is T three minus T four, then R or summation of R will become R T C. If I take an delta T as T one minus T two, then all resistance we take. If I take delta T as T three minus T four, then R T C will be there. So that formula we are going to use here. So Q is equal to T three minus T four divided by thermal contact resistances. This is simple formula we are going to use. Already we have determined Q. Already given R T C. So determine T three minus T four. What is Q? Q is five three five seven point one four. T three minus T four. That I want to determine T three minus T four divided by R T C. What is given R T C? Point zero zero three five. So now. T three minus T four is equal. So you can do your own calculation and determine it. The answer should come eighteen point seventy five degree Celsius. That's the second answer required, and that is temperature drop across the interface. Thank you very much.